any wife demand from her husband? What right has a wife upon her husband? Then he, sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, answered, and to ta'imaha idha ta'imta. You should give her food when you eat. You feed her when you eat. If you have food, uh, you must, uh, you know, providing food to her. Wataksuha idha ta'saita, and clothe her when you clothe yourself. That means you always take care of yourself to have your own clothes, so you should make sure that you are providing her with the clothes she needs. Wala tadribulwaj and not strike her on the face. Wala tukabbih and do not revile her. Wala tahjur illa fil bayt and uh, do not revile her or separate from her except in the house. Don't sleep or make her away sleeping in another bed or, uh, you know, uh, uh, make sure she is uh, uh, staying with you in, he, in your house, sharing your bed. So these are the some rights mentioned here and some basic right is mentioned. And number one is uh, to take responsibility of uh, her maintenance from the food, clothes, um, residence, whatever she needed, all uh, comes under the responsibility of the husband. So they are the one who is in charge of all this responsibility. Uh, as Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala said in the Quran, that men has given responsibility upon the women uh, that uh, uh, that Allah has given uh, some status to one gender, uh, to another gender, and also the responsibility of, uh, uh, you know, taking financial and all other responsibilities of the women, of the wife, by the husband. So this is number one starting, same way clothing, whatever her basic need, he must provide it. And originally, she is not obliged to earn the money, to go for work. All this responsibility upon the men. However, with some understanding, if she goes to work, he is uh, happy at that environment, he is not uh, having any objection to that, may be considerable, especially some area uh, li linked with the women uh, uh, you know, affairs, for example, teaching in the girls' school, uh, a female teacher needed. So some, uh, somebody's wife is working there as a teacher, uh, that should be uh, considerable, even that is a need for that. Even uh, for Muslim sisters to have the female doctor and female nurse, these are some area which uh, is good, some of the sisters will be going for work. Uh, however, a man has no right to send them, to force them to bring money to uh, have the income, to, to share in the maintenance of the house. All this is not uh, uh, the responsibility of them. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala given them uh, an uh, exemption from that kind of responsibility generally. Why? Because uh, they will be the mother and they need to take care of their children. That is the main task of them. They will be pregnant, they will be giving birth to their children, they will be breastfeeding. And even uh, when child, children are growing, they need to uh, give time for them. So all these and uh, making themselves safe, not exposing to many of the fitan, uh, fitna around them. All these Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala given protection to the human, given a favor to them that they are not obliged to do the, all this hard work outside home. However, they have responsibility uh, at home. Uh, this is, they are the main in charge at home to make it is maintained, uh, is taken care of uh, by them. And then issue of came, they don't strike on uh, her on the face. Uh, as you know, this is a big uh, kind of uh, misunderstanding uh, and media propaganda that uh, beating the wife, all this uh, come. In fact, we discussed this little bit last week uh, that Islam doesn't encourage that. Uh, although in some extreme cases to 
deter them from committing something immorality if needed, some light kind of uh, this uh, punishment could be there, so they'll be scared of that, so they'll be not going to do this. But even this is not the ideal example. Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, uh, he never, uh, you know, beat his wife. In hadith, Aisha radiallahu anhu narrates, ma daraba Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam imra'atan lahu wa la khadiman qattu. Never Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam did strike his, any of his wife, neither a servant. Never ever. Wa la daraba biyadhi shayin qattu illa fi sabirillah. He never used his hand to beat someone, to hit someone, to strike someone, except whenever it is fi sabilillah in the cause of Allah, uh, you know, Allah's way, when there is in the battlefield, in the battleground only, he will be fighting the enemies of Allah. Apart from that, never he hit or beat anyone, neither his wife, nor children, nor uh, you know, even his servant. So this is Islam is, uh, is, is, uh, uh, is for guiding us and he said Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala لَقَدْ كَانَ لَكُمْ فِي رَسُولِ اللَّهِ أُسْوَةٌ حَسَنًا Indeed you have the best example, role model in the messenger sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. He never hit. So that should be our uh, you know main uh, you know adab and main guidance main uh, you know uh, kind of uh, motivation we get from Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam that we take care in a way, we regard them, we take, uh, you know, uh, uh, you know that, that seriously they are deen, they are not doing anything wrong, but in the matter of action, Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam is main role model of us. That should be, uh, you know, final. It is in the Quran uh, that he is our role model. However, in extreme cases, it could happen that somebody to deter him or her to commit something which is totally wrong. It may be used, it depends, as we said last week, depending on the context you are. You look at the time, look at the place you are. Don't end up yourself by, you know, it is allowed, as I said in the Quran or in the Hadith, then you do something, you'll be ending up in bigger problem in the life. So a Muslim should be always careful. Uh, However, if sometimes somebody did, but should be not hitting at all, not striking on her face at all, the face is something very sensitive. Face is the, you know, uh, a main, uh, you can say, um, uh, uh, appearance of the person. Uh, that is very sensitive, the nose, the eyes, uh, and, the, and the mouth, all these important organs are on the face. And when a person comes to meet anybody, face is a first thing, is appearing. If you do something here, there is, there is a scar or there is something uh, that is really uh, humiliation to a person which is haram, which is not allowed. It's not allowed. Okay? So this is our deen. And then the hadith, the last sentence says, وَلَا تَهْدُرْ إِلَّا فِي الْبَيْتِ And if you want to boycott her, a, a, again, to deter her for something, uh, to bring her to cooperate or to obey the husband if she is a bit rebellious, to do some action to deter her from that, to improve her situation through some kind of punishment, and that punishment is to separate her in the bed, not sharing the same bed with her. So that you don't do except in your own home. Don't send her to your parents' house, go there. This is wrong approach. And nowadays we can see many of the young couple, of course there is family life issues time to time, now and then it will come some misunderstanding, argument, it will happen. All family life go through this kind of test and challenges. So some young people, they found too much, or she will go, or they will send her, go to your, your parents' home. This is wrong method. They think going there uh, for some time, staying there, Maybe there is a room to, uh, to, to take bath and to improve the situation, to wait for a good time to come, and then, then she will come. This is wrong approach. Make sure she's staying at your own home. Only thing is, you don't share her in the same bed, and that is a bit painful for them. They uh, take it a bit seriously. That could give you a good chance that she is 
uh, regretting and realizing you also uh, in a position of, uh, of convincing her and talking to her motivation uh, to her parents' home or any other place, then this opportunity is missed. There will be more distance happening. And that is a really, I found many cases, those who are physically sending them to the parents' house, they become more distant from each other. And the room of uh, opportunity or chance of becoming a reconciliation uh, become further away from them. This is a big hikmah wisdom in the Prophet some of the words that don't boycott her except in your own home. Don't set, set her uh, somewhere from your own home. The beautiful guidance uh, in this hadith and then coming to the hadith number 278 and Abi Hurairah radiallahu anhu qal قال رسول الله صلى الله عليه وسلم أكمل المؤمنين إيمانا أحسنهم خلقا وخياركم خياركم لنسائهم In this hadith Rasulullah صلى الله عليه وسلم said the believers who show the most perfect faith are those who have the best behavior best believer are those behaviors are good they are the best believer perfect mu'min perfect muslim is the person whose behavior, whose interaction, whose uh, uh, dealing and transaction is good, whose adab, akhlaq is good. He is the best, highest level of, uh, you know, among the mu'mineen. He also said, وَخِيَارُكُمْ خِيَارُكُمْ لِنِسَائِهِمْ And the best of you are those who are the best to their wives. To be good to your wife, to treating her with good manner, uh, with respect, with mutual understanding, this is the, the, the husband the, 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 who does this. He is the best Muslim, according to uh, the statement of Rasulullah sallallahu alaihi wasallam. In another hadith, you know, he said, "Khairukum, khairukum uh, li ahlihi wana, khairukum li ahli." The best among you are the one who is good to his wife, who is best to his wives. I am good to my wives. Mashallah, that was his claim. But his claim is verified with Aisha radiallahu ta'ala statement a little while ago that she was never rude to them. She was always kind to them. She never beat or hit anyone have his wife. So our role model, Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, he was good to, why, he, to his wife, uh, the, the women. We should be having this akhlaq, uh, this character that someone under our responsibility, we should be kind to them. We should not hurt them. We should take care of them. Then hadith number 279. And Iyas ibn Abdullah ibn Abi Zubab radiallahu anhu qal, qala Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, la tadribu ima Allah. Okay. One day Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said, uh, do not beat Allah's bond women, Allah's uh, slaves. Don't Beat them, the women. Don't hit them. Don't huh? beat them. This is his advice. <coughs> then, in Arabia, uh, at that time, as you know, they, the Muslim sisters are not uh, getting all these ahadith of Rasulullah sallallahu alaihi wasallam. They are in jahiliya period, so they were some of them were a bit rebellious to their husband. Uh, when Rasulullah sallallahu alaihi wasallam said, "Don't beat them." فجاء عمر رضي الله عنه إلى رسول الله صلى الله عليه وسلم فقال ذئرنا النساء على أزواجهن. So عمر رضي الله عنه came with a complaint that he is saying to the Prophet صلى الله عليه وسلم the women have become very daring towards their husbands by hearing this statement from you يا رسول الله. They don't they are not anymore as soft. They are very rude. They are you know. Uh, not caring their husband, okay? So this is problem now. Then, فَرَخَّصَ فِي ذَرْبِهِنْ رَسُولُ اللَّهِ صَلَى اللَّهِ عَلَيْهِ وَسَلَّمْ They give permission to beat them, to deter them from something, uh, to make them, they are obeying their husband, uh, of course, with very uh, small kind of threat, in fact, which is explained by Sahabi Abu Huraira, uh, Abdi Ibn Abbas, radiallahu anhumah, that you may just use your miswak to uh, use, not any big stick. 
So bit of permission he has given. Uh, fa, then what happened after that? فَأَطَافَ بِعَالِ رَسُولِ اللَّهِ صَلَّى اللَّهِ عَلَيْهِ وَسَلَّمَ نِسَاءٌ كَثِيرٌ يَشْكُونَ أَزْوَاجُهُنَّ Okay, then many women after that went to Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, uh, his family, complaining of their husbands. Okay, so they are not treating them, they are beating them. They are not, you know, treating them gently. Then Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, he is here dealing with the problem of the society. So it's not so easy, uh, people of Jahiliya to... Uh, bring them to Islam was not so easy job. Uh, he tried to help this way, problem come that way. He tried, tried to help that way, problem come this way. So that is the thing. Then he said, Subhanallah, many women came to complain. Uh, he said, uh, uh, Many women have gone, came around, around Muhammad Sallallahu family complaining of their husbands. They are not treating their wife well. Uh, they are treating them badly. Then he said, Laisa ulaika bi khiyarikum. Those who are treating badly their wives, the women, they are not good people among you. So opposite is, the one treats his wife in a good way, with respect, he is a good person. The opposite is other way. Okay, so this is, this is the hadith, sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, again and again, many ahadiths, he has given this uh, uh, advice to us. As you have heard last week, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala also commanded us, وَعَاشِدُهُنَّ بِالْمَعْرُوفِ Live life with them in good manner. This is command of Allah. And command of Allah is fard. To be kind uh, to your wife, to treat them uh, in a good way, uh, with good manner, this is wajib upon the men. All this about the coming to inshallah. This hadith. Okay, three situation kind came in this hadith. First situation came, Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa said, don't beat anyone, your wife. After hearing that, then some of the women became very, uh, they, 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 they don't dare their, their husband. Okay. <laughs> okay. 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 So they got the chance. Okay. Prophet forbidden them of beating us. I don't care now. I'll be mistreating him. I'll be not respecting him. I'll be not obeying him. We can be rebellious because nobody will be now deter her or stop her or beating her. She is not got freedom. So she is misusing this right. Some of the ladies misusing this right. Then many men came, Ya Rasulullah, they are not, not caring their husband at all after hearing the restatement. Then he said, okay, some, if someone is too long, then uh, to take some you know, uh, measure of punishment to make them they are respecting you and listening to you and obeying you, you may use a bit of beating. He allowed a little bit. Then another problem happened. And some of the men said, okay, it is allowed now. They started beating. Okay. The women came here another, another time, good number to around his house. Here, Rasulullah, no, this may not be mistreating us. Then Rasulullah said, what? You I allowed some in extreme cases to deter them. You may use this you know, form of uh, you know, disciplining them. Now you are misusing it. You are abusing this system. Those you guys are badly treating your wives. You are not good people. So you see how many scenarios here? <laughs> Subhanallah. Just I said, the giving tarbiyah to the community is not so easy. If you say this way, some people take advantage of that. If you go other way, then other people will be taking advantage of that. So Islam in the end giving us a balance. However, in this chapter, where more right of the women is mentioned, maybe some of the men are complaining, where is our right? <laughs> the next chapter is for your right. Okay, so don't worry. <laughs> so that is right for women, finish first. Hey, ladies first, as you know, that's why our Sheikh Nawabi, rahmatullah, he mentioned their right first. And then coming to 
the uh, men's right. I was, you know, reading Sheikh bin Muhammad bin Uthaymin rahmatullahi's commentary about this hadith. You know, uh, he said some people are very affected by Western uh, culture. In his time, he's talking from Saudi Arabia. They say always, ladies and gentlemen, they mention ladies first, and gentlemen, then after that. While in the Quran, always, everywhere the male mentioned first. Okay? So this is the natural Islamic system. So uh, I think Imam Nawawi, I don't think he was uh, influenced by Western culture at that time. However, uh, probably he wanted to give our sisters should not be scared of, you know, giving them the soft, uh, sensitive creation of Allah. The, the, he mentioned their own first. And coming now to the, the you know, haqqul zawji al marqah. Really? Yeah, yeah, you are right, subhanAllah, all right, I, I missed all, some of the hadith. Yes, that's true, that's true, so, hadith number 280, 280, and Abdullah ibn Amr ibn al as anhuma, anna wa sallam, aqal, ad-dunya mata'a, khayru mata'iha al-mar'atu saliha uh, Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam say, the world is but a quick passing enjoyment. This worldly life is a very short kind of period to enjoy some goodness from this dunya. <coughs> if there is some goodness in the dunya, like that is good food, mashallah, you enjoy good food. If you have a good house, mashallah, living there you enjoy. If you have a good car, mashallah, to have a good car, uh, it is a good uh, you know, enjoyment of having a nice car. If you have a garden, mashallah, this flower and nice things you enjoy. But best of the, you know, this world's quick passing enjoyment is to have a good wife. This is the best gift of Allah to a man. So he said, dunya mata, the whole dunya life is very short, quick passing enjoyment. You cannot enjoy too long in this dunya. Everything is very short. You know, even you want to eat, how much you can eat? Very nice food. If you're not eating this amount, it's too much. You'll be eating a very limited amount. After that, you can't anymore. Like this, everything is, is there is a limit you can do only. But in Jannah, mashallah, unlimited. You want to eat day and night, mashallah, you can eat. Nothing, no, no you know, indigestion problem, no, no any stomach problem, all will be in, in digested. But in the dunya, we have to be careful for everything there is a very limited time, limited amount only. Among this, all this limited life, the best ni'mah of Allah is uh, having a good wife. So, الدُّنْيَا مَتَى خَيْرُ مَتَاهَا الْمَرْأَةُ الصَّالِحَا الْمَرْأَةُ الصَّالِحَا A righteous woman, a virtuous woman. Saliha is not a beautiful woman only, Sayyid, or a rich woman. Okay? The, uh, you know, the righteous Saliha, Salah, with deen, with the deen, with the connection with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, her knowledge, her practice of deen, her sincerity, okay? her observing the hijab, her ibadah, her uh, you know, awareness of her responsibility as a wife, as a mother, uh, uh, to look after her kids, all these, the good character. If somebody found al mar'atu saliha righteous woman, he, he achieved uh, best ni'mah of the dunya, who got uh, millions of, you know, uh, pound in his custody, uh, palace-like house, but he was not uh, 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 fortunate to find a, a righteous wife. The wife is not righteous. She is uh, uh, not practicing deen seriously, sincerely. He has missed the best ni'mah of Allah. Okay? To have a good wife, Good means who is closer to Allah. Of course, if somebody uh, has Allah's fear, fear of Allah, can she become then rude to her husband? No. Disrespectful to her husband? No. So that's why this is the, those who are not married yet. Uh, what will be the criteria of the marriage? 
هذا رسول الله صلى الله عليه وسلم شيء فضفر بذات الدين تربت يداك you just to try to achieve try to find somebody who has good deen as your wife search look somebody is more religious more practicing you will get success in the life and she is is more beautiful or a bit less or a medium no problem uh, her uh, you know wealth her family structure uh, status and all other things don't look all other things more seriously and deen is less serious this is the stay deen number one and other whatever you can get alhamdulillah but if you can secure the deen that is the best achievement for you uh, best uh, you know most important ni'mah of allah in this world you are getting Deen is very comprehensive. Deen ibadah of Allah, deen a good character, gentle person, humble person, deen also how I treat each other, my character, my behavior, my trans you know, transaction. Deen is also you know, to how seriously I am doing my worldly duties and my responsibilities. Many things, as I said, looking after the children, taking care of the husband, Salah, Quran, Deen, Dunya, all these, is Salih, Salah together. If somebody is just doing Ibadah, but not giving any right to the husband, she has no good Deen. Doing some Ibadah, but not taking care of the children, not bringing up as good Muslims, not focusing that, she is not Salih. Her Salah is just very limited. Okay? Comprehensive approach. Inshallah. Well, as much as possible, you don't find everything, 20 something, you know, 100 percent not possible, I agree, not 100 percent. But you get 50 percent, 60 percent, 70 percent, 80 percent. If you get only 10 percent, then mushkila hadi. Okay? Allah al-Musta'an, may Allah help us. Okay. Inshallah, after, after we finish. Okay. Zakallah khairan. Okay. Now coming to the right of the man. Okay, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala very clearly said in Surah An-Nisa, Ayah number 34, بعد أعوذ بالله من الشيطان الرجيم الرجال قوامون على النساء بما فضل الله بعضهم على بعض وبما أنفقوا من أموالهم Men are the protectors, the guardians and maintainers of women because Allah has made one of them to exceed the other. One of them is one gender. Allah has given uh, this qiwama, this responsibility, one race, that is race of the, of the gender of the men. So women uh, will be taken care of them by the men, not the opposite, not the other way. This is Allah's decision. وَبِمَا أَنْفَقُوا مِنْ أَمْوَالِهِمْ And also that because they, the husband, spend to support them, their wives, from their means, they need to take this responsibility as we talked a bit earlier. Then he said, فَالصَّالِحَاتُ قَانِتَاتٌ حَافِظَاتٌ الْغَيْبِ بِمَا حَفِظَ اللَّهِ Then he said, therefore the righteous women are devoutly obedient to Allah and to their husband. So قَانِتَاتٌ means they are obeying. They obey Allah of course first. And they obey their husband as well. The obeying husband, because it is command of Allah, they do that as well. Hafizatun al And the guard they are themselves when their husband is absent, not at home, so they will be not taking this chance to commit which is immorality. They guard their chastity. And Bima Hafiz Allah. Uh, uh, and uh, what Allah orders them to guard their chastity and their husband's property are taking care of their children all these are responsibility of the women as we talked earlier so this way Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala given uh, responsibility in the hand of the man man is in charge 
This is general principle. This is Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala ala al-umum, he wants that. But you may ask, uh, say that in some uh, uh, extraordinary or rare case uh, that a man is not able to perform his duty. He is unable, lack of his education, lack of his deen, a sister got married with a man and he fathered some children of her, but he is not in that position. He is not even either working. She is the main in charge. Is, there are some examples in our society, uh, which is normally the man is, you can say, I don't want to say negative, he's a useless guy. <laughs> so this lady is now tested with all this responsibility. This is extraordinary. This is something very sad, rare cases. Could happen in some cases. But generally, opposite, generally is a man is very in charge. In some family, if make you know rare cases, if you make this man in charge, he is not able to take them anywhere. He is uh, has no this, uh, he hasn't have this ability. It is is rare case. Lekulle kaidatin lekulle yani shayin. Sometimes there will be some sharp cases, and these are the not norm. These are normal cases only. The normal cases, man is in charge. Uh, so this is qiwama generally that should be kept but in some cases where man has this ability but he is lazy he is not doing his duty or even sister is uh, his wife is, is she has too much leadership uh, you know mentality she is not allowing him to do the duty she take everything you don't know, you sit down, you know, that is wrong, that is against Quran. Huh? She should give him this responsibility. Of course, he, with some good other, she can help him, she can motivate him. So if you do opposite, in general case, you make it opposite, then you'll be suffering. There are many lazy people, they have given all this, you know, they don't do any job, they stay at home, lazy, don't want to work, don't improve their any skill, they rely, depend on their wife for whole life. And then they want to be also in charge. Uh, I am husband, I have more right. You not get it now. You have lost it. Because Allah said, Bima anfaku min amwalihim. You have to have income, you spend for them, you take responsibility. Then you claim qiwama, you you claim this responsibility ship without doing that, only claiming it, it doesn't work. So don't misunderstand or always, you don't do duty and say, Qiyam is for me, not for you. It doesn't work this way. That is a sunan. Allah has given us system, we need to follow that. Okay. The very rare, extraordinary case that everywhere there is some kind of, you know, rare hukum that is different. And then hadith number 281 on Abu Hurairah radiallahu anhu qal, qal Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, ida da'a al-rajul imra'atahu ila firashihi, falam ta'tihi fabata ghadwana alayha, la'anatha al-malaikatu hatta tusbih. Very strong message. Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said, when a man calls his wife to his bed, and she does not respond, and the husband spends the night angry with her, the angels curse her until morning. In another riwayah, إِذَا بَاتَتِ الْمَرْأَةُ هَاجِرَةً فِرَاشَ زَوْجِهَا لَعَنَتْهَا الْمَلَائِكَةُ حَتَّى تُسْبِحَ Okay. Uh, when a woman spends the night living away the bed of her husband, the angels curse her until morning. Another riwayah, وَالَّذِي نَفْسِ بِيَدِهِ مَا مِنْ رَجُلٍ يَدْعُوا مْرَأَتَهُ إِلَى فِرَاشِهِ فَتَأْبَ عَلَيْهِ إِلَّا كَانَ الَّذِي فِي السَّمَاءِ سَاخِطًا عَلَيْهَا حَتَّى يُرْضَى عَنْهَا رسول الله صلى الله عليه وسلم said by him in whose hand my soul is when a man calls his wife to his bed and she does not respond the one who is in the heaven who is Allah is displeased with her until he you know i.e. her husband is pleased with her so it is, uh, the hadith gives us message, it is incumbent for 
the wife to cooperate with the husband and to obey uh, to him, to obey him and not to disobey him. Uh, this is if she does so, uh, uh, especially even physical intimacy and other issues, he need to, she needs to respond to, he, to his call. That is a duty obligation upon her until she is very ill, until her situation mentally or physically, some, some kind of difficulty he is going through, that <coughs> husband need to put in consideration. Apart from that, in general, this is Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala wanted because this is, um, uh, uh, you know, main cement the relationship between husband and wife. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala made this relationship based on halal relationship. If it is not exercised, then shaitan will push a man or woman to go outside marriage and to commit immorality, to commit harams. There is, there is a desire, there is a demand that should be fulfilled in halal way. If not, shaitan will push one to commit something haram. Again, of course, that the mental and physical, uh, uh, psychological situation uh, should be taken in consideration. And that's why Rasulullah also guided us that you should not be uh, dealing with them like an animal or riding upon another animal to fulfill the desire. This is not the human relationship. Rather than to prepare somebody mentally with introductions, with some other you know, uh, you know, kind of introductions. So uh, a person is ready uh, is, 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 um, is voluntarily motivated, uh, that should be also the duty of the husband to make sure. Some, some men could be misused in this hadith. Uh, some women could be totally uh, disregard this hadith. There are both extremes in our society, unfortunately. So this is not only to give a uh, man one way only uh, to do whatever they want, whoever they want, without uh, in the considering situation of the women as, as if they were tortured uh, and abused, that is not allowed, neither also for the sisters to just ignore, ignore this demand and, uh, uh, and, not, uh, and not cooperating, that could be uh, uh, pushing her husband to go somewhere uh, to fulfill his desire in, in satanic way. So that is a balance both of the husband and wife need to put in consideration. Uh, hadith number 282 an Abi Huraira radiyallahu anhu aydan anna rasulallah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam aqal la yahillu li mir'atin an tasuma o zawjuha shahidun illa bi idni wa la ta'adana fi baytihi illa bi idni hadith of Bukhari and Muslim sahabi Abu Huraira radiyallahu anhu narrates that rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said it is not allowed for a woman it is not lawful for a woman to uh, have uh, you know, nafal fasting while her husband is at home or he is available uh, without her, his permission. Even fasting ibadah, she should not do, okay, except uh, with her permission. I would like to do nafal ibadah tomorrow. Are you happy with this? She will be asking this. Why? Because if he needs to go to bed with her, Fasting would be an obstacle. He, if he, she convinced him, then alhamdulillah he agreed, that's why there is no issue. So see how important it is. And having this relationship, having physical intimacy, is, is, is not a worldly thing only. That is also ibadah. That is also ibadah for herself. She should not be regretting, oh, I want to fast, you know, all, uh, tomorrow is Monday or Thursday. I don't want to miss it. If she, he is voluntarily allowing, alhamdulillah. But if he says, uh, maybe not this week, maybe not today, tomorrow, inshallah next time. So she obeying him and missing this novel fasting opportunity, she should not really regret for that. She is doing another ibadah. Obeying a husband is ibadah. Our husband should be also very careful. Even Yawm Arafat day fasting is very rewardful. And he, he stopped her. It's not right, okay? Like this Ashura, he shouldn't stop her. This very important opportunity, okay? So that's why Islam always gives us a balanced kind of approach in everything. Khairul umuri awsatuha. Islam is always for some kind of, you know, balance in the life. 
They don't be too extreme of getting you right. I'll deprive someone from even Ibadah. Yeah. That's true. There are some husbands like that. So, but Islam is telling him, a man, you need a novel fasting. Is it him? Many ahadith, Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, encourage fasting of Yawmul Ithnayn, Yawmul Khamis, Monday, Thursday, Ayyam Ubeed, Ashura, Arafa, all this. So he, she should be clever, motivating him. Look, other time, look the hadith that says, we need to go to Jannah. How this way? She will be helping him if he's a jahil. If he doesn't understand, if his knowledge is very li little, he's not motivated for go to Jannah. Let her motivate him and taking her, him on board. So that's why she should be now making more effort to guide him. This way is our solution, inshallah. And then, in the next sentence of this hadith, وَلَا تَأْذَنْ فِي بَيْتِهِ إِلَّا بِإِذْنِ She should not uh, give permission to anyone, she should not allow anyone entering uh, his house without his permission. How it is, it needs some bit, a bit breakdown, uh, like if somebody, he is having doubt, some of his cousin come, this and that, he's saying, no, don't allow this guy to our house. She should need to, uh, you know, adhere to that. But if he is saying, if your father comes, don't allow him, depriving, you know, her to see her father, that is dhulum upon her. So where there is a room of fitna and fasad, and room of doubt and suspicion, uh, uh, so she should be uh, careful not giving shaitan any chance or uh, any room of doubt in her husband's mind. Peace of herself, peace of him is better that she should not allow somebody who is, uh, he is stopping to enter. Okay? So this is for her safety as well, for her peace of mind, for his peace of mind as well. Even sometimes it could be not only men. Could be some woman, he is not happy to come. Like uh, some of the women, we make some women friend and they have some, you know, uh, fitna facade in their mind, also backbiting other people, creating family fitna between them, giving her, uh, her, uh, he, her, her waswasa to turn her against her husband, even if she is a lady. He has right to say, don't let this lady come, this neighbor's wife come to our house. She need to listen to that. So this is uh, uh, the uh, hikmah of this hadith also mentioning. Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam mentions so, much, so many nitty gritties about many things in our life. This is very uh, worldly thing. This is very our, uh, as if directly not linked with akhirah. But this is goodness for dunya and akhirah both. Somebody came, your friend, she is talking to uh, somebody's wife and very friend, close friend, but she is giving waswasa. Uh, she, her, her husband divorced her. She is not happy this lady is having her husband with her, giving waswasa, so she is also divorced. It does, sometimes this kind of thing happens. So uh, Islam is to give uh, us not punishment when Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam given some advice, all this not to deny, to take away our right. All this for our own benefit, in fact. Not to deprive us from something. Only to help us for our own benefit in this world and here. Coming to the next hadith, 283, is very important hadith of giving family responsibility to the parents. عن ابن عمر رضي الله عنهما عن النبي صلى الله عليه وسلم قال يرحمك الله كلكم راع وكلكم مسؤول عن رعيته والأمير راع والرجل راع على أهل بيته والمرأة راعية على بيت زوجها وولده فكلكم راع وكلكم مسؤول عن رعيته رسول الله صلى الله عليه وسلم said all of you are guardians caretaker responsible and are responsible for your words for your flock, for your somebody under your responsibility, you are guardian of them. You have a role uh, to play. 
Then he said, the ruler is a guardian of his subjects. Of all, you know, people of the country, the ruler is in charge of them. He has responsibility, he's guardian of them. The man is a guardian of his family. Uh, the family man, his responsibility to look after his family members, his wife, his children, his younger brother, sister, all of them, he is in charge. The woman is a guardian and is responsible for her husband's house and his offspring, his children, his grandchildren, the woman is responsible for everybody at home. Uh, the hus wife has some responsibility also. Uh, the, the husband has some responsibility also. Wife has some responsibility. Uh, that both of them need to take their responsibility. Uh, and so all of you are guardians and are responsible for your your, your wards, your uh, uh, flock, your uh, those who are under your responsibility. So this hadith is highly important, giving man and woman, father and mother, and the, and the husband and wife the responsibility of the whole house. Uh, when both of them are at home, there is specific responsibility. When husband is totally out of home, full responsibility at that time goes to the wife. And in fact, uh, there is uh, the, uh, the responsibility is defined by Rasulullah sallallahu alaihi wasallam. When he has given his daughter Fatima radiallahu anha in marriage to Ali radiallahu anhu, he make them sitting together first night uh, before Ali is taking his daughter. Uh, he made some dua for the man. He said, Ali, you have responsibility for outside home, having uh, income and providing, uh, you know, your family. Uh, their provisions, this is this outside duty upon you. Fatima, you have duty, uh, the domestic affairs under your responsibility. See, he has given uh, this way responsibility not to, to his daughter and his son-in-law. This is the duty of all Muslims. This way is defined by Allah and his messenger, sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. So both of them have, in fact, responsibility. And uh, uh, how important it is, especially the children's responsibility. It's not only providing a f uh, you know, a provision for them, their food, their clothes, their education, but giving them right tarbiya. Okay? Uh, the the al awlad ku ku anfuzakum wa halik minara. They save yourself, your life, and your, your, your family's life from hellfire. Yeah? It's very important. Give them right tarbiya is a priority. You are sending them to very uh, special school, to me, very you know, private school, uh, special ed education, sending to Oxford, Cambridge is uh, your ambition. That could be, alhamdulillah, good, well and good, but the more important is their tarbiya of the deen, giving them good akhlaq. Uh, this is uh, which will make sure they are safe from hellfire bringing them good akhlaq, uh, teaching them good adab, you know, from very uh, early stage of the life. When they are started eating, they start, my son, my daughter, with the right hand. Say bismillah, okay? Like this, you start with them. And then you teach them very basic knowledge of Islam, arkanul iman. Then when they are seven years, they should now start praying. Ten years, they should not miss the prayer. And all this, and daughter is uh, observing hijab. All this tarbiya comes at home. Home is the main uh, tarbiya center for our children. Main tarbiya place. Parents are the most important teachers in their life. Now, our children are spending time in the school. How many hours? Long hours, is it? <coughs> and the environment there, the culture they are, the Muslim, non-Muslim, all, uh, you know, these small uh, children, young age, they're easily influenced, peer pressure. When parents' connection and relationship is stronger, that is a fortress for them. Through that, it will be, they are immune by influence of the un-Islamic culture. 
But if home is not taking this responsibility, husband is busy with his work and job and business, and wife has also, she's busy with cooking, cleaning only, or watching TV or social media nowadays taking much of our time, and children are with their social media, with their device, with their mobile phone, with their, uh, all these, and no, uh, not taking this responsibility seriously, very soon these parents will be regretting. They observe something different behavior in their children's, you know, behavior, something wrong. They are influenced by their friend. The friend's culture is so strong in this country. So this is wajib upon them. Rai, they are shepherd. They are shepherd, they are guardian. This is their responsibility to keep them, to mold them in this early stage of the life, giving them very Islamic, you know, character, Islamic principles, Islamic شخصية personality in them. ما نحل والد ولد أفضل من خلق حسن. In a hadith, Rasulullah صلى الله عليه وسلم said, never a father or a mother given a better gift to their children than good character, good personality to build. It's the best gift of the parents to the children. If you make them, they are graduating from Oxford or Cambridge. You are very proud of that. But they miss Islamic terbiya, you'll be regretting very soon. You left for them big houses. And just you're busy with income and money, you know, two jobs you do. One job is daytime, other job is nighttime, mini cabbing, and then another job, all these. But you have no time to spend with the children to take care of their deen, character, salah, Quran. Even sitting with them, talking with them, giving time is important. I remember one of the uh, terbiya expert uh, was giving a lecture. He said, uh, one day, uh, a son uh, complained to mom, mom, I don't get to see my uh, opportunity to see my dad. Because uh, early morning he goes to the job. Yeah, he, he finished one job, goes to another job. And when he comes home at night, child is also in sleep. And weekend he does another job. So child doesn't see him, except very rare. He said, why mom, I cannot see you. He's working, he needs more money. So the more what he does, you get more money. How much he paid, mom? He paid 10 pounds per hour. So he, the child was given some, you know, his uh, pocket money. He saved his pocket money from he didn't spend. And he saved 20 pounds. Then he said, Mom, can I buy from my dad two hours? I have 20 pounds. I'll pay him. Can he spend two hours with me? This is uh, uh, some kind of reality is representing in this example. Many people just go for money. And they regret one day. The money he was bringing, not for himself, for his family. But his family will be lost. Children will be lost. That money will not help him. This hadith is very important message given to the father and to the mother, to the husband, to the wife. Giving time to the children, you know, spending with you, talking to them, having tried to have a lunch or, a, or, or breakfast or dinner, at least one meal with them. Family bonding, keeping this relationship, uh, telling the story of your own parents to them. Wow, they, they, some of them have ne never seen you, their grandparents because they are born after they died. He told, tell them their story, they are very keen to hear this. I found this very interesting. They say, could, could you tell us more? This is the way of bringing them to our own root as well, and to our family, and this is the bondage we are making with them. That is safeguarding them from the outside to fun, cyclone. And the, the wave is strong to take them away, to snatch away them from us. This is the duty of the father and mother. Big amana. Big amana. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala asks about this. And most of the children were lost. It's two reasons. One, parents did not give that importance and time to them. And the wrong friend were replaced by them. The wrong friends influence, influence their you know, association, uh, learning from them, all these wrong things, uh, these are the two reasons 
most of our children are lost. So parents, brother, sister should be the best friend of your children. They feel uh, comfortable to talk to the father, comfortable to talk to the mother. But sometimes some of the parents are so hard, so so I mean they, the children are scared of the parents, especially father. Uh, when father comes home, the children will go to their own home and closing the door. You know, only father will be shouting at them, not giving time. So giving time is very important. I'm talking to you that uh, I sometimes regret even, uh, you know, sometimes uh, you give outside, uh, you know, time uh, to help other people. But if your home is missing you, a big loss for your children. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala give us tawfiq. That we take this amana of Allah. These are servants of Allah. He has chosen to give you, give me five children, to give you three children, to give him seven children. This is sanctioned from Allah. In your plan, how many children will be having? Allah has given this and he given this responsibility to ayatuhum to take care of them, to bring them a good Muslim. It's not small duty. Is much more important than job I am having, you are having. It's much more important than the business. Uh, uh, it is flourishing uh, through your more time. You're getting another shop. You're getting a uh, double income from your business. Nothing is comparable with the, uh, with the investment to your children. This is the best investment of our time. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala give us barakah and tawfiq. Uh, we're coming to the end of the time, so uh, if you have any one question we may take, inshallah. Yeah. Yeah. What is it? We have done this, uh, the, 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 uh, which, 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 what day it was? Uh, don't worry, inshallah, one day will come. Today it's too long a story, I cannot say within one minute. Okay. Next time, inshallah. Sorry, sorry. Anybody else? Thank you. Yes. The Azan time is approaching, inshallah. Yes. Mm. I, I think I did about Dajjal and Jassasa in our Tafsir session, is it? Yes. Uh, the Tafsir session uh, one or two weeks ago. Mm. Two weeks ago, probably, yeah. That's true. Mm. Uh, in the internet, that's true. Hey, clever man, mashallah. Mm. Thank you. Jazakallah khair, mashallah. <laughs> طيب جزاكم الله خير سبحانك اللهم وبحمدك اشهد ان لا اله الا انت استغفرك واتوب اليك وصلى الله تعالى على خير خلقه سيدنا محمد وعلى اله وصحبه اجمعين سبحان ربك رب العزه عما يصفون وسلام على المرسلين والحمد لله رب العالمين والسلام عليكم ورحمه الله وبركاته امين جزاك الله خير بارك الله فيك Today's date is Allahu Akbar, Allahu Akbar.